podcast. Jay Donovan from Crunch Gear. I'm uh, here at the I Citizen Symposium 2010 in Columbus, Ohio. I'm here with Bob Johansson from the Institute for the Future, the author of Leaders Make the Future, 10 New Leadership Skills for an Uncertain Future. Bob, so your job is projecting the future and out a bit, 10, sometimes 20 years, correct? Yeah, 10 years, we find 10 is kind of the sweet spot. If you look 10 years out, you can see things that aren't apparent just looking one or two years out. 20 is usually kind of outside of the believability threshold for a lot of people, but occasionally okay. we go 20. Okay, and well, so how about just a little background projections on projecting you know what does it what does it take to make a 10 or 20 year projection is it is it is there a team do you do it alone yeah. is there a, I'm sure there's a lot of research that goes into it yeah we're, we're a think tank and we've been doing 10-year forecasting since 1968 so we're the only futures group that ever outlived its forecasts I guess uh, and we've done it four times over so we do forecasts which aren't predictions they're plausible internally consistent provocative views of what we think will happen looking 10 years ahead with a big picture lens and then we from that draw out insight and possible action so again the purpose isn't to predict it's to provoke insight and lead to better decisions in the present okay fascinating well so here, here's a projection I, I wanted to ask you about so I was out at South by Southwest and uh, I talked to some of the, the guys that are creating a lot of these location-based right. software programs Gowala yeah. and uh, you know, I, of course, asked them, what's your one, three, five-year projection? They were yeah. real apt to give me the one-year, but when I asked about five-year projection on location-based loyalty, yeah, yeah. Uh, no, you know, yeah, they didn't yeah. want to, yeah. to go that far. So what about, can I ask you a question about, sure. how about a five- or a ten-year projection on location-based uh, services and loyalty? Yeah. Well, if you, if you think ten years ahead first, it's really obvious we're going to have sensors everywhere, and many of them will be in our bodies, and so we're going to have that ability. We're going to have wireless everywhere, which means we're going to have something like geolocation. Um, so right now, the parts of the world that are most advanced are places like Helsinki or Seoul or Tokyo. The United States is not particularly more advanced, although the iPhone is maybe the closest step toward that kind of connectivity. But I think um, as you look 10 years ahead, it's pretty obvious that we're going to have a virtual overlay for the physical world, a blended reality, if you will. And that will include sensors, it will include wireless, and the whole concept of branding is going to be integrated with that anytime, anyplace world. Okay. All right. Just a few more questions. You, you say there will be sensors everywhere, and do you think those are going to be crowdsourced? You know, people with their phone themselves become a sensor, huh? or no. will it be they are physical sensors placed, owned by corporations, or both, or what? How, how's both. that going to shake basically, out? Basically, sensors will be very small and very cheap. So the beginning part will be our own bodies. Uh, and if you look at Kevin Kelly's work on the quantified self, he'll be here tomorrow morning. Um, you know, he talks a lot about sensors in our bodies and them revealing things about our own bodies that we didn't even know. So that's unobtrusive sensing, but it could, it could be very personal. Then you could have sensors that are physically based. You could also think of crowdsourced sensors where an individual is a sensor but and linking through a social network. So it's, there's many different definitions of sensors, but essentially it means we're going to have sensors everywhere. And many of them are going to be very cheap. And some of them are going to be implanted. Um, and it's going to be more data than we could hope to analyze. So huh. we're going to have all kinds of creative approaches to making sense of all that sensor data. Okay. <laughs> and that's the dilemma, that's the tricky part. Right, it'll be a, an avalanche of data. It'll be an avalanche of data and, and a whole lot of tools to help us make sense of that and the tools are better than they've ever been. So um, I think generally this is good news because we're gonna have more connectivity and the more connectivity we have, the more flexibility we have, the more powerful we are, the safer we are, but also unfortunately the more dangerous it is because these sensor-based networks can be distorted or manipulated. Okay. And, and this will be this will be good for the crunch gear readers because there are a lot of gamers out there. Yeah, cool. Um, what's what's a good side effect from gaming that people might, might not you know that people might not know about? Yeah. Um, 
and it could be you know we we talk about game theory and, yeah. and yeah. but but uh, playing video games is obviously part of that, right? It is. And so, yeah, what's I a agree. great side effect besides just becoming a better strategist or whatever? What's a well, I think video gaming is the pedagogy, the way of learning for the future because it's so much more immersive, so much more animated, so much more flexible, so much more personalized. So gaming teaches dilemma flipping, the leadership skill I call dilemma flipping, which is engaging in a dilemma, a problem that can't be solved, and creating an opportunity. And, and in the best games, your challenge is to create an epic win. Um, so it's teaching people how to flip dilemmas and create an epic win. Um, it's also teaching uh, social networking skills. You know, most of today's games are social networks. So my colleague, Jane McGonigal, who's a game designer herself, talks about the fact that gaming embodies urgent optimism at its best. And, and that principle, I think we can take from the gaming world and apply it to our real lives. And that's where the real value of gaming starts to become apparent. Awesome. That'll make everybody feel better about themselves. Well, good. <laughs> Good. I try to make parents feel better, too. Okay. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Bob. I really appreciate you taking the time to talk to me. Thank you. Okay. Thank you.